Healthcare workers can be placed at risk in the workplace by exposure to viral and bacterial pathogens. This video will demonstrate safe donning and doffing technique for personal protective equipment, or PPE, and some solutions to reprocess and reuse PPE. The PPE demonstration in this video is for healthcare workers in hospital settings, including routine patient care or instrument and materials cleaning and reprocessing. The donning and doffing sequence shown is for the protection of healthcare workers and is not a demonstration of sterile technique for performing procedures or operations. Please take note, the reprocessing guidance in this video is not a demonstration of best practices for PPE use. Ideally, a new mask and gloves, a new or clean gown and eye protection should be used for each patient encounter or every time a staff member enters the decontamination room for reprocessing equipment. Rather, it is meant to offer practical solutions for optimizing patient and provider safety when a full set of PPE per patient encounter is not feasible, such as in resource-limited settings. Part 1. Donning routine PPE for patient interaction with droplet and contact precautions, or the instrument decontamination room. You will need a hand washing station or alcohol-based hand rub, a mask, eye protection, gown, and gloves, a head covering and shoe covers or dedicated shoes if you are working in the instrument decontamination room, and a buddy to coach you through the steps and double check proper PPE placement. Step one, perform hand hygiene. The appropriate steps of hand hygiene are outlined in the Lifebox hand washing video. Step two, Don head covering. If you will be working in the operating room, in the instrument reprocessing area, or are at risk of being splashed in the work area, you should wear a head cover. Place head cover on your head, being sure to tuck all hair under the head covering. For routine patient care activities, a head cover is not needed. If you are working in an equipment cleaning or instrument reprocessing room, you may also want to wear shoe covers or a designated pair of shoes. Step three, don the gown. Your gown can be made from a variety of materials, from disposable plastic to reusable linen. For routine patient care, the gown does not need to be waterproof. If the patient care encounter has a high risk of exposure to body fluids or for instrument reprocessing, use a waterproof gown. You can also wear a rubber or plastic apron in addition to a fabric gown. To don the gown, put your arms through the sleeves. First, fasten the tie at the back of the neck towards one of your shoulders, rather than directly in the middle of the back of the neck. This helps to untie without contaminating yourself after your care routine. Next, tie the strap at the waist. The gown should cover your neck to knees, your arms to wrists, and wrap around your back. A note on coveralls or hazmat suits. These full body coveralls may be used by emergency response providers in uncertain conditions or disease response for pathogens spread by direct contact to broken skin, such as Ebola virus. Coveralls are not typically used for routine contact precautions and can increase the risk of self-contamination to the healthcare worker during doffing. We recommend careful consideration of what the appropriate covering will be for each clinical situation. Step four, don the mask or respirator. For routine patient care or instrument decontamination, wear a regular surgical mask. If the mask has ties, first tie the strings at the crown or top of the head, then tie the lower strings at the neck. Pinch the metal piece at the nose so the fit of the mask is tight to the face. Your buddy should visually confirm that the mask fits snugly on the face without large gaps. If there are gaps, adjust the ties. If the mask has elastic ear loops, place the mask on your face by encircling the ears in a downward motion. If you may be exposed to aerosols, you must don a more protective mask such as an N95 or KN95 respirator. This can occur during intubation, CPR, bronchoscopy, 
nebulized medication administration, or if the patient is receiving high flow nasal cannula or non-invasive positive pressure ventilation. Place the N95 respirator over your nose and mouth, lifting both straps over the head. Adjust the upper strap at the crown of your head and the lower strap at your neck. Press the metal nose piece to tighten the mask to your face. If possible, all staff should be fit tested for N95 respirators to determine the appropriate size of N95 for each healthcare worker. Whether or not fit testing is available, each user should perform a seal check every time to ensure the mask is placed properly to prevent entry of aerosols. To perform a seal check, after properly placing the mask on the face, cup your clean hands over the mask. Inhale strongly. The negative pressure of inhalation should cause the mask to seal to your face, and the wearer should not feel a leak around the mask. Next, with your hands cupped over the mask, exhale. You should not feel a leak onto your hands around the mask. If there is a leak, adjust placement of the mask or tighten the straps until no leak is felt and the seal check is successful. Men should shave their beards to achieve the best seal of N95 masks. Step five, eye protection. Place the goggles over your eyes. If using a face shield, place this over your face. Ideally, the eye protection will have coverage on the sides of the face to prevent splashing or contamination of your eyes from the side. Step six, perform hand hygiene by washing with soap and water or using an alcohol-based hand rub. Step seven, don gloves. Gloves should completely cover the wrist of the gown. No gaps should be visible. Step eight, check PPE. Your buddy should check that all your PPE is correctly in place. If any element is not placed or fit correctly, he may point out adjustments to you. Part two, doffing routine. The process of removing PPE occurs in a specific order because the risk of self-contamination is highest during this process. Assume all items are contaminated when doffing your PPE and therefore specific steps must be followed. Having a buddy assist you in this process improves safety. Step one, if you are wearing shoe covers for instrument cleaning or use in the operating room, dispose of the shoe covers. Step two, remove gloves. Grab the glove on the outside at the wrist. Peel the glove down inside out. Do not touch your skin with a gloved hand. With your bare hand, scoop one finger under the rolled wrist cuff of the other glove and roll down inside out. If disposing of gloves and gown into a trash bin, the gloves may be removed inside out with the gown and thrown in the trash. If your institution is reusing gloves, place them in a bucket for cleaning. If not, throw them in the trash. If you contaminate yourself during this process, stop and wash your hands or apply alcohol-based hand rub. Step three, remove gown. Pull the shoulder of your gown to one side to expose the ties and pull the ties free. Peel the shoulders of your gown away from you. As you pull your arms free, roll the gown down inside out. Place the gown in a laundry bin if it is reusable. Ideally, bin should be open or have a foot pedal for opening, so there is no need to touch the bin with your hands. Step four, Remove eye protection. Remove the goggles or face shield by touching the sides. Place them in a designated area for decontamination. Do not touch the front of the goggles or face shield as that is likely to be the most contaminated area. If you contaminate yourself accidentally during this process, stop and wash your hands or apply alcohol-based hand rub. Step five, remove mask. To remove a surgical mask. If you are in a room with a patient, remove the mask after leaving the room. Assume the outside of the mask is contaminated. Particularly if masks will be reused, you want to avoid touching the mask itself as much as possible. First, untie the straps at the back of your neck. 
This is done first to prevent the dirty side of the mask from falling forward and touching the healthcare worker. Second, untie the top strap at the crown of your head. Lift the mask away from your face and place it in a designated area or bag for reprocessing if it will be reused. If you are wearing an N95 respirator, first grasp the lower elastic band at the back of your neck and pull all the way over your head, being careful not to touch the front of the mask. Then grasp the upper elastic strap at the back of your head and pull over your head, keeping tension on the strap until the mask can be released away from your face. Place into a clean paper bag for reprocessing if the mask will be reused. Step six, doff head covering. If you are wearing a head covering, remove it by tucking your fingers under the edge of the head cover and lifting it upwards. Place the head covering in an appropriate place for reprocessing, or if it is disposable, in the trash. Step seven, perform hand hygiene with soap and water for at least 20 seconds or alcohol-based hand rub. Part three, Reprocessing PPE. While studies and guidelines are always changing, some possible ways to safely reprocess PPE are outlined here. Cloth gowns, cloth head coverings, and shoe covers can be laundered with hot water and detergent. Adding bleach can damage cloth. Bleach is only necessary when reusable PPE is visibly soiled. Make sure your laundry staff wears PPE as well to stay safe while handling soiled laundry. Plastic eye protection can be washed in water and detergent or wiped with 70% alcohol or 0.1 to 0.5% chlorine solution. If gloves are in short supply, hand hygiene can be performed over gloves using alcohol-based hand rub to allow for extended use. If your mask must be worn again between patients and before reprocessing, Fold the mask inside out so the external part is touching itself with the clean internal part on the outside. At all times, avoid touching the outside of the mask. Store in a pocket until next use is needed. Remember, ideally a new mask should be used between each patient encounter. Both surgical and N95 respirators should be single use if possible. However, when resources are critically limited, there are some safer methods for reprocessing masks for reuse, and also some unacceptable methods, which could render masks ineffective. N95 masks should not be reused if possible, but if necessary, can be decontaminated by UVC light, vaporized hydrogen peroxide, heat, or waiting the appropriate amount of time between uses at room temperature. Each of these methods has specific protocols. Please familiarize yourself with the evidence before implementing any of these reprocessing methods at your hospital. Other methods are likely to be developed. Make sure you are up to date on the latest recommendations. Do not use alcohol or bleach solution on the masks as it will remove the electric charge in the fabric that contributes to the filtration efficacy against bacteria and viruses. Reference up-to-date recommendations on how reprocessing of PPE can be done in the safest way possible. Healthcare workers can be placed at risk in the workplace by exposure to viral and bacterial pathogens. This video demonstrated safe donning and doffing technique for personal protective equipment for healthcare workers performing routine patient care or instrument reprocessing. Protect yourself and your patients by wearing appropriate PPE for each clinical setting.